right? This is grade two, module four, lesson 25. And in this video, we're gonna be continuing to connect our number disks to that standard algorithm and having students kind of relying on their um, manipulatives, that place value chart and their, their number disks to make sure they really understand that standard algorithm. We don't want to go jumping straight to the standard algorithm um, if students aren't quite ready to let go of that manipulative. So this is a transitional lesson. Some students are going to be ready to go straight to that standard algorithm. Other students are going to want to still use this a little bit like training wheels. And so teachers and parents, you guys are going to have to use your professional judgment to know which um, position a particular kid is in. Are they ready to move on without and, and let go of the manipulative or do they still kind of need to use that manipulative as um, uh, training wheels? So the directions say um, to solve using the vertical number, uh, vertical written method, <clears throat> but then it also says to use the place value chart and number disks. That's this is part of that transition that I was talking about. So what we're going to do is if I were you as the teacher, I would say, okay, well, let's first write the, the problem, 65 minus 38, making sure that we line up the ones columns and the tens columns. And then I would guide our students through just this general logic before we overhear, before we show the place value chart. And actually, we can show the place value chart ones tens. I'm just not going to fill it in right now. So let's use logic. So we have the ones and here it says we have five ones and we need to take away eight ones. Now can we do that? Do we have enough ones to take away eight? The answer is no, we don't have enough. Now you mathematical purists are going to say of course you can take eight away from five. You get negative three. Okay, folks, if you're here in that camp, don't forget we're talking to second graders here. And at this point, we are dealing with positives only, and we're dealing with uh, physical manipulatives over here, in which case we cannot take 8 away from 5. So since we cannot take 8 away from 5, we need to go over here to the tens column and unbundle one of these tens, re leaving 5 tens left over. And when we unbundle that 10, we get 10 ones, which means instead of having five ones, we now have 15 ones. Now we have 15 ones, and that's enough to take away eight ones. So 15 minus eight gives us seven. And then over here in the tens column, we now have five tens, take away three tens leaves us with two. So our answer is 27. So if we wanted to, well, we should. Um, eventually, I'm going to let go of this, uh, but let's model this. So we're going to start by modeling 65. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. So there's my model for 65. I have six tens, and I have five ones. And now it says take away 38. That's what this is, take away 38. Well, we clearly don't have enough ones to take away eight, so we're going to take this guy and unbundle him. So we're going to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So when I unbundle this ten, I get ten ones. So now I have 15, and that's enough to take away 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I took away 8, and that leaves us with the 7 right here. It leaves us with 7. So our answer there is 7 in the 1's column. And then our directions say we need to take away 3 10's. And we have five tens, and we're going to take away three tens. So when we take away three tens, one, two, three, that leaves us with these two 
tens. So the answer is two tens and seven ones. So that's 27. Two tens, seven ones. So the answer is 27. So ideally, what teachers, what you can do is have students do this on their paper and have them do this over here with actual place value chips on their desk. So they don't need to record this on paper. Uh, they could ju just do this with their um, place value chips. Um, or some students are going to be ready to just move on to that standard algorithm, in which case they don't even need the place value chips anymore. So this is not going to be, by the students, officially recorded on paper. They're just going to do that with their um, place value chart and their number disks. All right, so let's um, do another practice. We're going to begin by writing this down, and we have to stack them vertically. So we're going to begin with 184 and then 95. And here's the tricky thing. you got to make sure that students are lining up the ones column and the tens column. Of course, you can imagine students are going to scooch this over and line up the one with a nine. And that would be no good <clears throat> because we would be lining up 100 with the 90, the tens column, and that's no good. So now let's just use logic. Let's look at our ones column. It says we start with four and we're gonna take away five. Do we have enough ones to take away five? No. So we're gonna unbundle one of these tens, leaving us with seven tens, and we're gonna, when we unbundle, we get ten ones, which means instead of having four ones, we're now going to have 14 ones. So we unbundled and now we have 14 ones. And now we have enough to subtract. 14 minus 5. What's 14 minus 5? 9. And now we're going to look at our tens column. We have seven tens we're going to take away one ten. I'm, whoa, I said the wrong thing. We have seven tens, and we're going to take away nine tens. Do we have enough tens? Nope, not right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to unbundle this hundred, leaving us with no hundreds left over, and that when we unbundle the hundred, we get ten tens, which means instead of having seven tens, we're now going to have seventeen tens. And now we have enough tens to take away nine. So 17 take away nine. That's eight. So that's eight tens. And then in the hundreds column we have no hundreds up here, take away no hundreds, so we're officially done. Teachers, a lot of students want to put zero here. They don't need to do that. In fact, we'd prefer them not to. Uh, we don't need those leading zeros. All right, so the answer is 89. Now, one thing I want to point out here is I want you to notice how I'm really working hard at keeping our columns, just like that place value chart. I want to really honor that place value chart that the students have been doing on the previous 20 or so lessons. Um, so help the students, if you need to, tell them to turn their, their lined paper sideways, and then they can do their work on the lined paper sideways, which makes columns. Uh, that's one way to do it, or give them graph paper. It's another way to do it. Now, I'm not going to do the place value chart, but ideally, if students needed it, they would have modeled 184. One, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, four and they would have modeled 184 on their desk. They probably wouldn't do it on paper. And, um, and then they would be doing this with their model, their physical models, as they are progressing through the standard algorithm. All right, the last problem for this video is a word problem. So we have, let's see, we have Dominic has $167. He has $88 more than Mario. And then the question is, how much does Mario have? So it doesn't specifically say we have to do this, but we have two subjects. And so I'm going to uh, use the tape diagram, but I'm going to do the side-by-side -side 
tape diagram. I'm going to put Dominic right here, and I'm going to put Mario here, so up and down like this. And I'm going to begin by making both of their tape diagrams the exact same length. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go back and read the question. So it says Dominic has $167. So that means we can label this right here, Domini Dominic's tape diagram stands for $167. And then it says he has $88 more than Mario. Okay, now what this means is we need to take Mario's tape diagram and make it shorter by $88 because Dominic has $88 more than Mario. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to take Mario's and and chop it down. And so now we have Mario is 88 and and now it says how much money does Mario have? So that's the question. The question is asking us how much does Mario have right here? And that's this little piece of the bar right there. So what are we going to do to figure out how much Mario has? We're going to do 167 take away 88. And notice I lined up my ones and my tens and my hundreds just like the place value chart. And now let's do our work. Seven ones take away eight ones. Uh-oh, that means we have to unbundle. So we're going to unbundle one of these tens, leaving us with five tens. And instead of having seven ones, we're now going to have 17 ones. And now 17 take away eight gives us nine. Now we have five tens take away eight tens. Uh-oh, we don't have enough tens to take away eight, so we're going to have to unbundle. So we're going to go to this hundred, unbundle that hundred, leaving us with zero hundreds left over. And instead of having five tens, we're now going to have fifteen tens. So now we have fifteen take away eight. That gives us 7, so 79. We don't have to do anything in the hundreds column because there's no hundreds, take away no hundreds, so we're done. So the answer is 79. So Mario has $79. So that's that thing right there, $79. And that wraps up this video of Lesson 2, Module 4, no, Grade 2, Module 4, Lesson 25, where... We're starting to give up the manipulative. We're now just kind of doing it on the side on the table. We're not recording it. Uh, we're just using it to support our move, our transition to that standard algorithm.